Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about furnaces. Um, it is winter time here in West Virginia. Uh, I guess, well, I guess it's winter time in the whole Northern Hemisphere, but uh, uh, everybody's got furnace questions right now and they're watching the furnace videos. So I just wanted to give you a really quick overview. Well, maybe not really quick, maybe a very thorough overview of an RV furnace. Now, the, the, the one that I have here to show you is a Dometic furnace. Um, whether it's Dometic, an, an Atwood, or a Suburban, they're all kind of the same. They may look a little bit different, uh, but they also look very similar. So uh, uh, I'm just gonna go over this one real quick. This is a, like I say, this is a Dometic, and Do, Dometic bought Atwood furnaces. Um, s several years ago and uh, this was one of the first generations of Dometics. That's why I have it. The first generation of Dometic furnaces, not too good. Uh, this was a brand new furnace and a brand new RV that uh, uh, we tried a couple things under warranty. I was dealing with, you know, talking to the people at Dometic. We tried a couple things and he's like, you know what, we're just going to send you a new furnace. You take that furnace and you just uh, uh, field scrap it. Well, I just throwed it in a building and uh, thought I might sell some components off of it. I never have. So I'm gonna give y'all a quick look around on it and uh, then it's probably just gonna go in a scrap pile. And no, I won't be selling this furnace because it is supposed to have been scrapped in the field. And if I sold this furnace and Somebody called in and go, hey, I'm working on this furnace and here's the serial number. Uh, Dometic would have my hide, so so no, this one is uh, this one's going in the scrap pile. So uh, let me uh, let me show you the furnace real quick. Now this actually did not have a board in it. I just stuck this board in here uh, just for demonstration purposes. And this Dometic, it would slide down in here. All right. So so don't pay any attention to that board. So typically your furnace will have four wires. You're gonna have usually a red, which is your posi. These are marked. Uh, this is a black. Most of the times uh, you'll find a yellow wire or white wire. Uh, usually it's yellow though. That's your ground. So those are your 12 volt ground and your, and your 12 volt positive wires for your furnace. The two blue ones are your thermostat, all right? Usually they are marked somehow thermostat positive, and you just assume the other one's a negative. Sometimes it does not matter how you would hook these up to your thermostat wires. Sometimes it does. So it's just best if you're working on your furnace, keep the positive one separate and uh, know where it goes. Typically you're gonna have a, a red and a white wire coming from your thermostat. You, the red one's typically your positive, white one be your other one. Now, if you're working on a furnace and you want to know, you know, is my thermostat any good or is my control circuit any good? Well, as long as you've got good 12 volt positive and ground here, you can take these two blue wires apart and just twist them together. All right, that'll make the furnace run. Now it'll run until you take those wires apart. Don't hurt a thing. Uh, that's how I test them. That's how everybody tests them. Just twist the two blue wires together and uh, that's how you test them. Um, so your power comes in. All right, I know there's a lot of blue wires here. Let me see if I can figure out what goes where. Because I know one of the, your thermostat wires is gonna come to your board. Okay. And the other one, in this particular case, you got a lot of blue wires. One of these blue wires is going to go to your gas valve. But anyhow, let's just for demonstration purposes, let's just keep it simple. All right. So you got, let's say you're still hooked up, you know, your thermostat, uh, your temperature in your RV drops below your set temperature on your thermostat. Thermostat closes. It's just a switch. It closes and sends power down here to this board on this positive wire, all right? It goes into the board to energize the board, which will energize the motor. Now, sometimes there is a delay. 
you know, from the time your thermostat kicks on, or if you twisted these blue wires, sometimes there's a, 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 a sometimes there is a delay before the fan comes on. All right. Now, when the fan does come on, what happens is this is your cell switch on this particular furnace. So uh, I don't know exactly which one's first, but I'm pretty sure the cell switch is usually first. Um, the motor starts turning. The cell switch. Um, tell you what, let me just take a cell switch out real quick. All right, so your cell switch, okay? It goes in there where the, uh, where the squirrel cage fan is at. When the, when the motor turns, turns the fan, and the cell switch does just exactly like it sounds. Uh, it, if the fan in the motor is turning at sufficient speed, it will, this, this piece of metal acts like a sail, S-A-I-L, and it will close that switch. The power is coming in. Once the switch is closed, power comes out. It goes to the high limit switch. On this particular furnace, It is down there near the flue, okay? I, no, no way in the world I can show you that. Now, a lot of furnaces, it would be on this back side back here. You'd have to remove this cover to get to it. But uh, that limit switch is just a little thermal disc. That's what they call it. It's a little thing. It's got two screws that holds it in the case. And it's got two um, terminals for wires. And it's just a thermal switch. If it gets too hot, it'll open. Shut the furnace down. When it cools down, it'll close. The furnace will fire back up. Uh, it's not uncommon for that thing to open and close pretty often when the furnace is burning. Um, I think sometimes they just put too small of a limit switch in them, and uh, you know the furnace will come, get, come on, go off, come on, go off. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, intervals of you know several minutes, uh, but that's just somehow some of them work. Uh, the only thing that uh, you now, if your if your if your furnace is cycling like that a lot, uh, one thing you can do is just make sure you have good airflow. Make sure you don't have any rugs over any of the registers. Uh, make sure that your registers are clean, um, and, and that's about all you can do. Really, the the ductwork on some of these campers is not the highest quality, and over time they'll collapse. And sometimes you'll have limited airflow, but there's not a heck of a lot you can do about that. Those are your two safety fits. Those are your two safety switches in a furnace. Your cell switch, make sure that, that the fan is turning at sufficient speed. Your high limit switch, make sure that the furnace is not too hot. If, if both those things are satisfied, the power comes back out of the limit switch, back into the board, tells it, okay, we're all good. Our safety features are working and they're satisfied, everybody's happy. And then this board will send power to the gas valve, open the gas valve, and at the same time, uh, it will start sparking the igniter inside the firebox. You know, at that point, you should have ignition. Because uh, if you have gas and the uh, gas supply is good, you know, the furnace is happy, all the safety switches are happy you know, it should fire up. Now, if, if it doesn't, then, hey, you got a problem. That's, that's why you were working on it anyway, right? But you need to just figure out, you know, if the furnace is, uh, if you can hear the igniter, and a lot of these boards will have a, the, the dinosaur boards will have a, um, a little LED here. It'll tell you when you have power. It'll tell you, you know, if your safety switches are good and happy. It'll tell you when the gas valve opens. Now you will hear, you, can, you will hear that gas valve go clunk when it opens, okay? It's fairly loud, even over, over the, the sound of the fan a lot of times, you'll hear that gas valve, or at least you can put your hand on that gas valve and you will feel that thing open, okay? If you're working on your furnace and you know, it looks like everything's happy and satisfied, you know, it opens the gas valve, it's trying to ignite. You may hear it going tick, 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 tick. 
That's the igniter sparking inside the firebox. At that point, if your furnace does not fire up, you may have a gas issue. Um, you, may, you may not hear your tick, tick, ticking, okay? You could have a bad board, you could have a bad igniter, you'd have something going wrong inside the burner assembly. You know, it's hard to say, but this is just, I'm not trying to diagnose every problem that you might have with a furnace. I just want to quickly go over some of this stuff, show you what it is and what it does. Okay. Now this furnace and most modern furnaces have this reset button right here. Okay. This is actually a breaker. It is a, it is a thermal breaker. If the furnace, you know, is drawing too much current, it will kick that reset button or breaker. Um, actually, the, the, the uh, Dometic calls that a breaker. And uh, they also, you know, if the furnace just gets too hot, uh, it will open that breaker and shut the furnace down. Now, I've, in the beginning, on these first generation furnaces, we replaced a lot of these things replaced a ton of cell switches still still replace a ton of cell switches on domatic furnaces because uh, if you if you're trying if you're testing your furnace and especially with a dinosaur board i'm not sure about an oem board um, but i believe it acts about the same uh, if the furnace comes on the fan comes on and maybe just runs for a few seconds and the furnace shuts off. Now, if you've got an OEM board, it'll have an LED light that will give you uh, a numbers of flashes. Right here's the, the legend for it. Um, that would be, if your cell switch is not working, you're gonna get one flash with a pause. That's airflow limit fault, okay? So the, the, lim the limit switch, the high limit switch, and the cell switch, are wired together. So you could have a fault with either one of those if you get one blinking light on an OEM board. Now, I don't believe the dinosaur boards do any self-diagnosing, but what will happen is, you know, like I say, the, the, the furnace will come on, the fan will come on, maybe run for just a second or two, and it shuts the furnace off, okay? That tells you right there that you've got a problem in your two safety switches and most likely especially if you're working on dometic it's probably gonna be right here cell switch <laughs> now if you're working on one of these dometic furnaces where this pipe is way back in here this is the exhaust flue if it's way back in here if you're trying to test fire this on the bench uh, you have to put something in that to extend that out here a little bit because uh, right here is your combustion fan and uh, that is drawing air in here, send it through the combustion chamber and out this exhaust. Now, if this pipe is too far back in here, this furnace fires, it's gonna start sucking carbon monoxide inside the furnace and it won't stay lit uh, because there's not enough oxygen in the air for it to burn. Uh, these things burn a lot of propane. They take a lot of oxygen. Um, ask me how, how I know that that it won't run if that pipe is too far back in there where it'll suck in that in that uh, where it'll suck in that combustion fan i'm not going to tell you how i figured that one out i'm going to say that we did it the hard way <laughs> now as far as testing some of these other components um, that's just going too deep for this video i just really wanted to do an overall view of the major components and to kind of explain to you how they work because the, the cell switch and uh, the high limit switch kind of throws people sometimes. Um, and heck, sometimes experts get thrown every now and then. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically how, how these furnaces work. Like I say, whether, no matter what manufacturer you, you no, matter what manuf no matter what manufacturer furnace that you may, be, you, that you may have, uh, if it's been built in the last 25 years, it's probably gonna look very similar to this. And the, the, the major components are still gonna be the same. Uh, they, they put a computer board in those a long, long time ago. Uh, the really old ones had a manual valve, uh, just like the manual water heater valves, which we very seldom see anymore and we haven't seen in a furnace 
for a long time, but they may still be out there. So there you have it. There's just a quick overview of uh, your major furnace components. Um, hope this helps. Hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. If I did, leave me a comment and uh, I'll try and unconfuse you. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for this. Uh, I'm going to go up the road and fix another one and uh, y'all have a fantastic day.